Hello, and welcome back to our series on cloud native application development. Today, I'm going to give an introduction to Tecton, talk about creating a Tecton task, running that task, and viewing the results. Now, what is Tecton? Well, Tecton builds itself as a Kubernetes native CI CD solution. And what does that actually mean? Well, you may be familiar with different pipelining solutions such as Jenkins, uh, GitLab pipelines, GitHub workflows. Uh, Tecton's a little different than those. And where the Kubernetes native piece really comes into play is that when you install Tecton, you install it on your Kubernetes cluster. And the ways in which you interact with Tecton are through the Kubernetes API. So all the different pieces, all the different components of Tecton are all just Kubernetes objects. So each step in a Tecton pipeline is a Kubernetes object. The pipeline itself is a Kubernetes object. Even the running instances of the pipelines and the running instances of the task are all Kubernetes objects. Now, Tecton has two major components that you really need to know about. There are more than that, but the two big ones are one task. So task are what we're going to be talking about today, and those are the different steps inside of your pipeline. In the background, each task is just something in which Tecton is going to kick off a pod and run a series of containers that will each run a command or a script in which you input. So each single or every single task, uh, you're going to specify the image you want to run on that, the different um, parameters that you need to run that task, and then the actual script or command that you want to run for that task. The other major component is pipelines. And I'm going to talk about pipelines more in a future video. But pipelines are a way that you can string together those series of tasks into a coherent workflow. So an example for those of you who maybe have never built a pipeline before, what you might do with a pipeline, a really basic one, would be one in which you can take your application and build an image and push it into a repository. And the way in which you would do that is you would create a task for downloading or cloning your repository from your source repo, assuming you're using get. And then you would create another task that would take that cloned code and it would build it into whatever your distributable is. Let's just say a jar for, for this example. And then a task would take that jar file that you built and it would turn it into an image. And then finally, you would have another task that would take that image and it would copy it up into um, a Docker repository or Quay repo or some sort of image repository you own. That would be an example of a really basic set of tasks and a really basic pipeline that takes your code from uh, living on your get repo to an image pushed to Quay ready to deploy. Now, let's talk about steps. Let's talk Tecton, um, and specifically, let's talk Tecton task. So here you can see, uh, and I'm going to do most of this in OpenShift, um, but you may be able to follow along if, even if you have vanilla Kubernetes, because I will be doing some of these commands using the TKN CLI. Here you see that we have uh, sort of a blank project. So if you're using OpenShift, the first thing that you will need to do is you'll need to install Red Hat OpenShift pipelines. Um, I'm not going to show how to do this here, but you don't need to do anything special. You just need to go into the operator hub and install uh, a vanilla version without any sort of customization. Uh, and once you do that, you should see this little pipelines pop up here. And this will give us insight into all of our different pipelines or tasks. And triggers are not something I talked about, but they're ways of uh, in which we can get pipelines started from outside of the Kubernetes cluster or from inside the Kubernetes cluster. Uh, today, we're going to focus mostly on tasks. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go, we're going to take a look at the um, lab that I wrote, and I'll be a link to this lab in the description below. So if you're interested, you'll be able to follow along that way um, if you're watching this on YouTube. 
So here is an example of a basic task that clones a get repo or get clone task. And it's broken up into four different pieces, params, results, steps, and workspaces. So first, let's talk real quick about params. This is our task input. We need to know the repo URL that we're cloning. And here we want to know the destination path in which to clone that repo to. Uh, you can see here we've got a default value. Um, so that's something that you can set. We've got a little description. We say what type it is. Nothing too fancy here. Results are the output that this task is going to have. So in this particular case, once we clone our repo, we're going to want to figure out the SHA, uh, the commit SHA of the latest commit. And then we're going to want to output that to this commit result. I'm going to skip steps for now and go down to workspaces. So workspaces are ways in which we can share results in between our tasks that are bigger than what we can store in results. So a future task could use this results commit as part of its input. Let's say that we're creating the image later on and we want to be able to uh, have our image tag match up with the latest commit tag associated with that image. Well, it can just take this commit result and use that. But there are some things that are gonna to be too big to store in these results. And that's where workspaces comes in useful. And then this actually does have other uses, but the biggest one is to give us persistence in between tasks. I mentioned before that in the back end, when we create a task, it spins up a pod and runs something. Well, once that pod is finished, the pod gets destroyed and everything on that pod is gone unless we save it onto some sort of persistent volume. And that's where workspaces really come in. So here, our output, we're generally going to want to associate a persistent volume with this uh, workspace so that we can connect that persistent volume to our next task and be able to read whatever is in that persistent volume. In this case, it would just be our entire get repo. The last thing that we're gonna look at is steps. So this, you can see here based on uh, this dash, is actually an array list. So you can have multiple steps. In this case, we've only got a single one for simplicity, and we're calling that step get clone. You can see that we've specified the image Alpine get, a really, really simple image that has get already installed on it. And you can see with this first one, we're doing get clone input params repo URL. And this is a dollar sign, and it's just a normal parentheses. It's not a squiggly parentheses or anything else. It's just a normal smooth parentheses. So input params repo URL means that we want to look at our input and get the parameter repo URL. So this is how you specify the parameters up here. Um, and we'll see a different way to do it, but this is the easiest and simplest way in which to do that. And then here we see workspace output path. So in workspaces, you can, if you'd like, specify the specific mount path that you want the workspace to be mounted on. If not, then Tecton will assign that path for you. And workspace output path is how we can uh, automatically get that path inside of our script. Uh, and we'll see that once we actually run this, this will just resolve to whatever our workspace path is being mounted to. Uh, and then here we've got our input destination path, which is again referencing one of our params. Uh, the next thing that I want to draw your attention to is this result SHA equals get rev parse head. So all this is doing is finding our, um, our get commit and it's saving it in the result SHA environment variable. And this is the important part, printf percent s result SHA into result commit path. Result commit path is the important part here because this is how we actually save our results, is we put it into this file. And this is a file, and anything that goes in that file will be saved in the results. And again, that file is gonna be results dot whatever the result name is. So in this case, it's gonna be commit. And then path gives us the path of that file. And then here, these last two are just so that we can uh, print something out so that we know what we did worked. So here, we're gonna check out our first task run and we're going to cat the hello world.txt file that was in that. And if you follow along with the example, you'll be able to see what that file actually says. So let's go ahead and let's copy this task and just create it. 
So yeah, I could create it from here, task, but I'm actually just gonna click this little plus button up here and create it this way. And so now we've got our tecton tasks get from tasks. The next thing that we want to do is we're going to want to run this task. And as I mentioned before, when we run the task, um, that is also going to be represented by a Kubernetes object. And that Kubernetes object is called task run. So here you can see our task run. Uh, in this case, we've got our task rep that's referencing our get clone task, which matches up with our task name. And then we've got the parameter repo URL, and we've got uh, this repository, which if we, you know, we can go do a quick look at this repo, and we go to our first task run, here's that hello world.txt. At the end of this, we should print out, I have successfully run my Tecton task. Um, and then we have our workspace. Now here I'm putting in an empty directory. Generally what you're gonna to wanna to put in here is a persistent volume, but since we're only gonna run a single task in this uh, particular video, I'm just gonna do an empty directory for simplicity. Uh, although maybe I will use a, a persistent volume in, in the later portion of the video. So I'm just gonna copy this and paste it. Uh, the last little trick that I wanna point out is you've got this generate name this is useful for when you're doing a uh, task run because what it does is it'll take the first part of this name and it'll just append a random six digit alphanumeric, alphanumeric on the end of it. Uh, so what it means is that I can create multiple task runs without having to change the name every time uh, so there are no conflicts. So here we're going to go back here. We're going to create our task run. And you can see that that is going to start running. So if we go to our task and we go to task run here, you can see we're in the status running. You can see in the back end, it's just creating a pod. We can even look at the logs and information about this pod. This is good to know when you're trying to debug an issue with Tecton. Um, but we can also do that directly on the task run itself. Uh, so I'm going to click into here. And so we can see our task run ran successfully. I have just successfully run a Tecton task. Great. Uh, and if we look in our details, we can see our task run results here. We can see our commit message and we can see what that commit value is. And again, this is something that could have been used uh, in a future, by a future task if this were part of a pipeline. And single task runs can be useful to know um, just so you can kick them off with cron jobs or whatever. So it can be useful just to be able to run a single task like this. The last thing that I want to do as part of this, or the last uh, couple things that I want to talk about, um, we already talked about using the UI and seeing the tasks, whether or not they succeeded or failed. Uh, but there's one more tab here called cluster tasks. And if you use OpenShift and install OpenShift pipeline, you can see that there are going to be a bunch of cluster tasks that come pre-installed. These are pretty useful. Um, you can click into here. Uh, this is an older version of the get clone, um, but you can click into here and you can look at how these tasks work. And you can even use these tasks directly if you want. The only difference between a cluster task and a normal task is a cluster task is installed at the cluster level. So every single namespace in the cluster will have access to these tasks. One thing that I would caution against, though, if you do decide to use these tasks, um, these tasks can change or be deleted in future versions of OpenShift. So if you do decide to use one of these tasks, just copy the entire task, put it in one of your source repos, and then create it with just slightly different names. So, or just create it as not a cluster task, but a normal task. Um, and that's just to prevent you, uh, prevent it from changing without your knowledge. But these are really good starting points for a lot of basic stuff. You can see that this get clone has a lot more going on and is a lot more customizable than my really basic um, get clone, get branch that we created, um, but also a lot more complex. So the one other thing that I wanna talk about is I wanna talk about the RMAC. If we go under user management and go to service accounts, you'll see this pipeline service account. And this gets created automatically on every namespace. So if I go 
to project and I click create a new project, example, projects, and I go to service accounts, you can see pipeline gets created every single time. Uh, on OpenShift, this pipeline service account is what each of the Tekton tasks are run with. And the pipeline service account uh, is how we can uh, set up credentials for our Tekton tasks. So if we've got a, a repository that's not public, which is pretty common, or a source repo that's not public, we can add those secrets to our service account and that will allow us to actually um, connect to those, those repos using those credentials. And just to give a real quick example of that, uh, let's, let's run our task again. And so I'm going to, I'm actually just gonna copy the same task. Um, and actually, actually we're, we're gonna run the task a little different. I promise I would use the, the Tekton CLI. So we're gonna actually run this one with the Tekton CLI here. Uh, and real quick, if you do wanna use the Tekton CLI uh, and you're using OpenShift, always get the version of Tekton that comes with OpenShift. And you do that by clicking this question mark box button, the command line tools and the TKN and downloading it directly from here. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your version of Tekton is uh, correct. So real quick, we're going to use this, this command. So it's going to be TKN task start, and then we're going to name our task, and then we're going to do dash P, which is for parameters, and set our repo URL equal to, and I'm actually going to make the repo URL slightly different than what these guys are showing us. So I'm going to give the repo URL um, the secret get. And then I'm going to also set up, in fact, why don't we just go with this? Uh, oh, let me change to the right namespace. So for our destination value, we're going to keep our default string. And for our workspace name, we're just going to call it output no subpath, and here you can see we can choose a couple different things, either secret or config, if you want to enter config information, uh, an empty directory, or a PVC. Generally, we're going to want to set up a PVC, or we're going to want to use a PVC, but I don't have that set up right now, so we're just going to use an empty directory. Um, and no uh, special stuff there. So we went ahead and we created a task run through our TKN CLI. Now let's go take a quick look at what that task run looks like. And we can see that it's failed. We can click here and it says declared workspace output is required but has not been bound. Okay, that's a different error than what I thought. Oh, yep, misspelled output. O U T P U T. This one should also fail but for a different reason. So this one also failed. It says uh, inputs destination path not found. Could not read username for HTTPS github.com, no such device or address. Now this isn't the clearest error in the world, unfortunately, um, but what the error is actually saying is that it's trying to clone our repo and it's getting a 403 back. Uh, and that's because this repository is private. Now, the way that we can fix that is by giving our service account pipeline access to that repo. So I've created a secret here inside of our um, namespace, and I've called that private get secret. And the one thing that I want to draw attention to, because this is very important if you create this secret and try to follow this demo, is that there's this annotation tekton.dev slash get zero. And you can see there's also one for get one. And what this does is it says that if we try to connect to HTTPS github.com or HTTPS getlab.com, that we want to use this secret as our credentials. So the only thing that we need to do now, now that the secret is created, is connect it to our user account. 
or to our service account. And so we're going to go here. Uh, we're going to edit the YAML. And under our secrets, we're going to add our secret name is, uh, and then I believe I think I named it private get secret. So it's got. Now, let's just rerun this pipeline. And I'll show you guys one more trick. We're going to rerun in the same way, but this time we're going to add dash dash, I believe, show log. I think that we have fixed our issue, hopefully. Um, so let's run it one more time. And fingers crossed, we have a successful run. Great. So you can see this time we were able to clone our, our secret repository, our private repo, and output our message. And if we go um, and look at our task front, you can see that I failed quite a few times. Uh, in case anyone's wondering, you need to have a username or it won't work, apparently. Um, but you can see I failed quite a couple times, but we eventually succeeded with our new task run and we've got a different commit ID that we could use. Um, so I hope that you guys all found this useful. Uh, again, the lab that I was referencing most of this will be included in the details page. And on the next video, I'm going to talk about taking these different tasks and stringing them together into a pipeline to create an actual workflow. So I hope to see you there.